My name is Scott Waite. I'm a production supervisor at our Parker Lord Erie facility within our repair station and post bomb machining departments. I've been in this role about three years and I truly enjoy what I do. Our team is very excited to share our video content here with you today. We're very proud of our processes, our products, and our people. And we feel that our customers will find our content very informative and interesting. We look forward to sharing this content with you today. So what we'll cover here today are many aspects of the repair process. We're gonna be covering operations that are performed within the repair station and adjacent departments within the Parker Lord Erie facility and give you a sense of what it takes for us to repair a part when our customers send them to us. We can't cover everything based on our time frame, proprietary reasons, and the complexity of our parts not allowing to show every operation of every process. But we wanna provide a snapshot of the operations in the production side of things to allow our customers to get a glimpse of what really happens to the parts when they're sent into us. The manufacturing of elastomeric parts is not an easy process, but it's something that we do well and that we feel that we're the best at in the business. And we'd like to share some of the information on why with you here today. To provide a brief introduction on our facility and our team, without a doubt, safety is our main priority. It's what we look at every day and strive to improve in all aspects of what we do on a daily basis. We have fully engaged operators who are committed to continuous improvement and looking to maximize our processes within the facility. Our Parker Lord Erie facility is very large with 1.1 million square feet of building space. Our Parker Lord team utilizes roughly 590,000 square feet of that with operations across the plant. Our repair station department specifically is 13 operators across two shifts. We also utilize workforce of about 230 union operators uh, outside of the repair station, which support product being done in other departments and specialized processes within the areas. Hundreds of support staff also occupy the facility here in Erie. Our team is definitely experienced. Our repair station operators total 121 years of operations experience here within the repair station. We average 9.3 years of experience per operator. Bottom line, we have great people and a great facility with state-of-the-art, climate-controlled, year-round operations. While serving Aftermark customers since 1978, Lord has saved customers over $800 million by offering repairs versus buying new OEM products. So as we walk you through the repair station process, this slide shows a few of the areas that we're gonna be walking through here today. We're gonna start things off with our salvage area of operations. Our salvage area within the repair stations where we first received the cores in. This is a very labor intensive process where we are deconstructing the part. Parker Lord quality parts are not meant to be deconstructed, not meant to come apart. So we utilize liquid nitrogen, which is freezing the parts, freezing those bond packages down to a negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 200 degrees Celsius temperature range. What this does is creates the bond package in a way that it freezes it and doesn't allow it to be flexible and allows us to break it. Um, we're utilizing a hydraulic press to then push that bond package off of the intermember. In this case, the video is showing a 412 spindle. Now I'd like to highlight that there is a cap that's a 3D printed cap on the top of the spindle to protect the spline. The spline is a very important area within the 412 spindle and we do everything we can throughout all operations to avoid damaging that, that spindle very important spline. So 3D printing technology is something that we utilize across the whole plant. So we're utilizing this for safety, to improve processes and to save cost. It's a technology that we've put some time and money into and are looking to utilize in all areas of our facility. Primarily salvage is breaking the bond package and then blasting to remove excess elastomer and any residue of adhesive that may still be on that major metal. So we're salvaging the major metal in order to move it along in the repair process to further ensure that it is a conforming part. Now I'd like to introduce Deanna Bird. She is a valued member of our salvage team as a salvage operator with eight years of experience here at the Parker Lord facility. Salvage adds value to the customer by being able to receive parts in as cores and do a quick exchange on their parts, if it's an exchange part, uh, it's ready to go within three days. And if it is one that's going to be overhauled, we overhaul that and send it back to the customer. And it's a cost savings to them. 
Plus, we also do uh, work for the OEM side as far as doing test metals, and they're able to reuse the parts again as, as tests so that they don't have to use new metals. We provide value to the customer by being able to receive their parts in as a core, and if it's an exchange part, we exchange it with a quick turnaround at a cost savings. But we also have the same quality standards with these as we do the OEM side. The next area in our repair process that we will cover is core inspection. Core inspection allows us to separate conforming and non-conforming product. We use a variety of equipment and different methods for certain applications. CMMs are used often within our facility. A uh, video of this coordinate measuring machine running uh, is showing a, a pylon isolator being run on a set CMM program, which takes hits and readouts are then sent out for specific features and dimensions to ensure that a part meets print tolerances. We also have an example of a 412 spindle being CMM'd within our repair station. We also have some video of a shear bearing intermember core being inspected on a zero spindle. This is just one example of a type of inspection equipment that we use for our core inspection. We will now move on to our repair portion of our overall repair station processes. Our repair station operators are extremely skilled in blending damage from parts that have been damaged out in the field. Taking non-conforming material and bringing it into tolerance is what we do on a daily basis. We use a number of techniques and tools to repair our parts. Our videos here show some examples of this. We have some sanding, blending, and polishing. We also show some brush scad, electroplating repair a flat paint operation, which is not often performed here in the department, yet is similar to shop paint and is only used for certain customers. Machine aim cores is often performed within the facility. We see here a 412 spindle being placed into a horizontal mill and machining the ID bore to a very tight tolerance. Moving on, we will now take a look at our non-destructive test, NDT area. There are a few processes within the NDT area that are mainly focused on. That would be mag particle and penetrant. So both of these major processes are looking for indications and cracks within a major metal. Mag particle is using a magnetic field in order to help highlight the cracks or indications. Penetrant uses a chemical solution in order to find those cracks. First we'll be looking at the mag particle area. Here we have a video of a 412 spindle being processed by an NDT operator. This is a fairly quick process for mag particle inspection. Within our penetrant area, parts are exposed to the penetrant line. First they are cleaned, they are then exposed to a chemical solution for a set amount of time, cleaned again to remove excess solution, and then placed under a light in order for the trained NDT operators to identify the indications and cracks. For our video purposes here, we utilize a scrap part that had been identified as scrap due to a crack in the past. So as you can see, there is a crack in the upper right hand side of your screen that is circled in red. Here, our NDT area gives us the ability to find these cracks that may be underlying within the surface that could not have been seen from a normal visual inspection. From here, we will shift our focus to the metal preparation process, which is preparing the surface of metals for the bonding process. In order for proper bond quality, metal needs to be cleaned and needs to be able to receive adhesive properly to ensure that the bonding of elastomer to metal is quality product. Numerous types of chemical treatments are performed in our chem line. Here we have some video of our automated chem line processing parts. Some of the chemical treatments performed on our chem line can range from simple passivation to more technical chemical treatments. Our automated chem line ensures a repeatable process. We need to ensure that the parts are exposed to the right chemicals for the right amount of time and our automated state-of-the-art line allows us to do that. As I had mentioned, metal prep was used to prepare metals for the bonding process. We will now focus on some of the other areas of the bonding process. Our Parker Lord bonding process is what sets us apart from our competition. Proprietary reasons, we cannot show every area of the bonding process, yet the criticality of this process is very high. The bonding area is where parts truly become functional and dynamic in their movement. It's where the raw materials are matched up in order to create a functional part. The bonding process starts with an elastomer recipe. So our state-of-the-art mill room uses an automated system to pull the proper ingredients in the proper amounts for each elastomer blend. 
This elastomer blend is then mixed and milled into a rough elastomer. This rough elastomer is then brought to our calendar room. Our calendaring process allows us to calendar the rubber to very tight tolerances. In parallel, while the rubber and elastomer is being prepared, we are also preparing metals with sprayed adhesive. Fabrication of these parts happens in a clean room to avoid any FOD. So we're in this room combining our prepared metals with our calendared elastomer in order to fabricate a bonded product to high quality standards. So we have a number of different presses within the facility. Uh, we have two major bonding departments, one being our HCL, our high capacity laminate department, where mostly natural rubber is produced there. And then we also have a silicone department, which is primarily synthetic rubber, which allows us to create dynamic properties in a lot of different parts for the specific needs for our customers. Here we have many different cavity molds and many different sizes of presses that we can utilize in order to get the right bond and the right product for the certain applications. I would now like to introduce Tina Rudinsky. Tina is a manufacturing engineer that supports the repair station department. She will go into a little more detail on the 412 spindle specifically. So let's take a closer look at what makes up a 412 spindle. On the bonded side of the spindle, you have four coated bushings. Uh, the elastomer package is made up of a series of shims that allow the bonded package to be stiff in certain directions and soft in others. It consists of six cylindrical shims and a trans transition shim and four spherical shims. The shims along with the outer member is bonded directly to the spindle. The final component is the cap that will allow the spindle assembly to be attached to Lord's elastomeric dampers in the hub assembly. Following the bonding of our parts, we're going to move now into the bond check area to test bond quality. Our parts are extensively tested to ensure proper bond quality. We utilize many different types of testing. Our first bond check video we have for you today is a 407 shear bearing on a static torsion test. This is an HCL high capacity laminate part. Moving on to a synthetic elastomer part from our silicone department, we have a video of a 407 lead lag damper under a dynamic test. Shifting away from the bond process, we will now look at a very specific type of machining, which is post-bond machining. Post-bond machining is a non-traditional type of machining. It is not taking just a chunk of metal and removing material. Rather, it is taking a bonded part and machining to precise dimensions. Tight tolerances are often seen within the post-bond machining department. Tolerances that cannot be held just by a press bonding. Our videos for the post-bond machining department first show a lead lag damper. Here it is a lathe operation machining the OD in the face of a blue coat material. There are many different materials that are machined within the post-bond department. Blue coat is just one of them. Next example of post-bond machining that we have here is a 407 lead lag damper also on a lathe. Here the ID bore aluminum material is being machined. Post-bond utilizes small depth of cut but is doing critical machining for high value parts. Assembly is the next portion of the repair process that we will discuss. With assembly comes many different types of operations. With our fluid elastic isolators, there are silicone fluid fill operations while ensuring that no air remains in the parts after filling. Some other examples of assembly are staking, thread insert insulation, gluing, and torquing, just to cover a few with a few short videos. On a daily basis, there are assembly operations being performed all over the repair station department and all over the Parker Lord Erie facility. We now move to one of the final production operations in the repair process, that is painting. Much like other areas of manufacturing for our operations, our paint operations follow all NADCAP certifications and guidelines. All repair station operators painting repair station product are NADCAP certified and follow the same processes as our OEM. Our video here shows the first prime coat being put on, which is a yellow coat on a 407 lead lag damper. Then we have the top coat, which is gray, also being placed on the same type of part. Following our paint operations and following the proper cure of the paint drying time, we complete adhesion and paint thickness tests. With production operations complete, we now look at our repair station tag signing. Within our repair station tag signing, our operators complete the proper documentation. Critical proper 8130s are attached to parts. Our operators in Parker Lord 
take very seriously the responsibility of deeming a part airworthy. We follow all FAA and EASA regulations and guidelines to ensure the quality products are being sent to our customers. We value the opportunity to perform work and documenting things properly is very important within this process. It allows us to support our customers as best we can. We want to ensure our customers can trust Parker Lord parts and feel good about putting them on their aircraft for such critical functions as fighting fires, emergency medical services, along with other very important functions within our customers. We want to support our customers in order for them to support the rest of their operations. I would now like to introduce repair station work leader Joe Kinsilla for some detailed information on the 412 spindle. Hi, my name is Joe Kinsilla. I've been in the repair station for nine years, and four of those years was spent on the 412 spindle. So I kind of wanted to share with you the types of damage we see and any ways that maybe you could help to, uh, to get your spindle faster and in better shape. So the first thing I want to talk about is the spline. So anytime, as soon as you take that pitch horn off, uh, you're going to want to cap this spline. You want to make sure this is protected from the second that is removed. And also when you're removing the pitch horn, we, you want to be as careful as possible. That's the, the, the majority of rejections on this part is for damage in this area due to you know, either trying to cut the pro seal, the sealant that's there, or trying to hammer off the pitch horn. So just make sure you're taking your time and be patient trying to get that pitch horn off because this will drastically reduce your lead time if we do not have to repair this spline. Now the spindle core is life limited to 10,000 hours um, but that does not mean the bond is uh, is supposed to last to that 10,000 hour mark. Our warranty is actually uh, 2,500 hours um, or five years and it's on condition. So uh, it's, it's not going to last as long as the spindle, um, but uh, we can repair it and overhaul it as we've talked about in the past. So we kind of wanted to talk about an important aspect of this, which is packaging. Um, damaged packaging and improper packaging can lead to uh, more lead time for your spindle, or in the worst case scenario, a scrap spindle, which we don't want to see. Um, so I kind of wanted to show you an example of some good packaging here so you kind of know what uh, what we're aiming for. So here is a reusable box and nice thick hard foam padding and it fully encompasses the spline here and protects the whole outside of the spindle. And this is really good packaging and it will give you a good chance of having your spindle arrive in a uh, you know great condition and you can get it back fast. As we have shown an example of proper packaging, we'd also like to look at some less than adequate examples of packaging. We really want to share this information to assist our customers in avoiding additional damage on their parts. Parts see enough wear and tear on aircraft, so we would like to avoid any additional damage during transport. Proper packaging can help keep lead time down and reduce cost of additional damage to parts. Regarding damage to parts, we have some pictures of spline damage on 412 spindles. As we have mentioned, with the 412 spindles, the spline area is critical in avoiding damage here. A very large portion of our 412 spindles that are deemed scrap are due to spline damage. We would like to work with our customers to highlight this in order to allow them to avoid any spline damage in order to get their product shipped back to them as quickly as possible. Next, we'd like to provide some information on customer ordering. Orders that are at or outside of lead time are very important. Orders that are sent to us inside of lead time makes it more difficult for us to meet the customer expectations for all of our customers. We are set up and happy to assist with any AOGs or expedites that need to happen, but we want to avoid inside lead time orders when expedites are not expected. Meeting and exceeding our customers' expectations is our main focus. Some of the ways that customers can help us is with clear and accurate paperwork and PO information, signifying core return only when applicable, and core return within 30 days ensures that we can then further support all of our customers. In certain cases, we do need to charge a core fee when cores are not returned. This is necessary for us to continue to serve all of our customers to the best of our ability. Continuing on to look at our core return policy related to avoiding custom delays. Our intent is to work with our customers to help avoid any unnecessary delays with parts being shipped to Parker Lord. It is important to have an office or an agent within the United States in order for the shipper and freight forwarder to properly work with Parker Lord. 
communication on core shipment through email, utilizing the email address that is listed on your screen, is very important. This allows us to properly document and credit our customers for core returns. Additional information on core return policy can be found at the link listed at the bottom of your screen, or as always, contacting our service representative who are always happy to assist. Our CoreVist online ordering is a great tool. It's easy to use, it allows visibility for our customers to see some real-time status updates on their parts. Improved document access is also available while mobile devices are fully accessible utilizing the CoreVist tool. The system is user-friendly and it helps Parker Lord, but more importantly, helps our customers to allow for better visibility on their parts. A reminder to visit www.lord.com, which has lots of information that can assist customers. This can eliminate some wait time in correspondence with our customer service. Yet, as always, our customer service representatives are always available to help and excited to resolve problems for our customers. Please reach out to our customer service representatives for registration to this Corvus online ordering tool. We really feel that it is a benefit to our customers and we'd like the opportunity to assist customers in using this tool. At this time, we're gonna open it up for any questions that you may have.